the start of our 20th year. Um, I know, <laughs> 20 years. I don't know where the past 20 years have gone. Um, I was young one time. You know that? Uh, anyway, before we get started, I'm going to ask if you'll open with a word of prayer. Uh, word of prayer. Lord, thank you for uh, this day. Thank you for uh, the week uh, so far that we can start to it. Thank you for the gift of music and for uh, all that you've done for everyone here. And for our voices, for the ability to sing, for the instruments, uh, for the opportunity for people to come together, uh, to uh, praise you with that, that music. For the ones who had a great time tonight, and to answer all the questions that they had. And for your prayer. Amen. Okay. Um, I want to start with uh, our. Our Bible verses. Um, basically, I use Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Um, that's kind of where this all started from was a ministry um, to provide specifically for homeschool school children, um, but also children that are in you know hybrids, public school, private school. Many private schools cannot really, they can't really have a big music program or even much of one. I was teaching at a private school at the time, and my best friend was teaching at another private school at the time we started this. Both of us had a band, and both of us had a choir. I think her choir had six people. It's not a choir, just saying. I think mine might have had 10. Um, and then the band, if we had 14 people, we really felt like we're growing, this is great. That's about as big as it got. And that's really not playing in a band or playing in an orchestra either. So we were looking for a way for the kids to have a, a more complete music experience. Um, so one year we picked the same music. I picked it for my school and she picked it for her school. And then we had our concert on the same night in the same place. <laughs> and we put our groups together and we just, we looked at each other that night and just thought, we, we're on to something. This is great. So the very next fall, we started CFAF. And we sent out letters to the local um, private schools and home schools. And at that time, we actually got a lot of public school kids because that was the year that Forsyth County stopped their string program in the schools. And so we had all these string players that had nowhere to play. Um, and so they came as well. Um, so that's why it's usually mostly after school hours, but we are primarily, I would say, what would you guess, 90% or more are homeschoolers. So it's a very big homeschool um, community here. We're a little bit more than just a music school. We didn't actually start it out that way, but we found that so many parents walked in the door with their children and had so much in common with the other parents that walked in the door with their children. Um, homeschool parents are a little bit different. They have different values and a different focus. Um, most of them are making it on one income so that they can homeschool their children. So just immediately there were all these bonds of friendship between the parents and between the students. And so the next thing you know, we ended up having a lot of other programs in addition to this. Um, which Corey's going to talk about in just a minute. But first, I uh, just wanted to say most of our teachers volunteer at least some of their time. Some of them volunteer all of their time, and so they're not paid. They, but they are really high-level um, teachers. Um, even the ones that are getting paid a weekly uh, amount are spending an awful lot of time preparing. Uh, for class and, and not getting paid for any of that. So there's a, and they volunteer to come and help clean and they volunteer to help organize. So they are always coming in and just going above and beyond. Your tuition, we try to keep it as low as we possibly can, um, but it basically adds up to enough to cover the rent on this building. Um, and then we fundraise to help cover costs of new music, the utilities, equipment that we buy, 
um, you know, there's just things you just have to have when you have all of these music classes. And so we do, we do need money for that. Um, and then we have the recital and concert fees that you will be paying. Um, and those cover the cost of the venues because we, this is not large enough to have the concert here. So, yes, we have some noisy little students. <laughs> That's actually my granddaughter. So. <laughs> Making a little extra noise. Um, so anyway, that, that's what the fees are. It, nobody's getting rich here. Um, nobody's, we, we just, we just are trying to pay the bills. So. Um, and so uh, Diane Stevens, which many of you have probably heard from in email already, is gonna talk about fundraising, communication, and volunteering. Thank you, All right. Yes, as I said, my name is Diane Stevens. I started volunteering at CFF in 2012 when my daughters started attending here. And um, my daughters are Jessica and Jenna. They grew up in CFF and graduated from CFF. They taught a few classes here while they were in college. Now they've moved on to full-time careers, but they loved, loved, loved their time at CFF. It became a second family to us. As Hetty mentioned, we had bonds with the other families, the parents, the kids. Um, friendships will treasure forever. So if you're new here, welcome. And I think you will really enjoy it and be able to um, make some good friends here. All right, um, volunteering. So um, as Teddy mentioned, we don't have a very large budget. So we do rely heavily on parent volunteers. Um, when you register, it'll give you a list of possible options. Um, the main thing that we need is help cleaning the building. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, just a quick little tidy up, get the trash, wipe down, commonly touch services, um, things like that. Then once a week, we ask for someone to like vacuum, mop, clean bathrooms, that sort of thing. And I'll be setting out a schedule um, to sign up for that. Um, we also need help scanning in the music, um, and that is something that you can kind of do on your own time, um, and I can go over exactly how to do that. That's pretty easy. Um, and taking attendance. Um, the teachers are pretty busy, so if we can have parents take attendance for the teachers, that's helpful. This year for the K-2 and elementary, we're really hoping to get um, parents who can sit in on the classes um, you know, if there's 20 to 25 kids um, and the teacher's trying to teach, uh, if, you know, some crowd control, <laughs> just kind of maintain um, some discipline and, and just kind of keep the kids focused, um, that would be helpful. And just in general, kids who don't have classes to try to keep them um, entertained and uh, we may set up some games for them, that sort of thing. So um, backstage help, when we do have a performance, especially for the littles, it's really helpful to have some parents backstage. Um, it's kind of like herding cats to get them all lined up. And if we can keep them rolling, it keeps the performance going faster and we'll make sure you definitely get to see your own kids perform. Um, but that's also helpful. Um, like Hetty mentioned, we're more than a music school and we want to promote friendships. So we like to have socials and parents who can plan and chaperone socials. Um, that's super helpful. We usually just have those at the building here and um, have some dancing and um, maybe video games or something fun like that. And chaperoning events, we have a lot of dances. Um, so we can always use help um, with chaperones for that. And Perhaps you have an area um, or a skill that could help CFAF, um, maybe website design or printing or anything at all. Like if you have a business or a special skill you think would help us, we would definitely be open to hearing um, of what you might be able to do for us. Uh, I am the communication person. You'll probably get tired of hearing from me. Uh, the, Best way to communicate is through text reminds. You should have gotten a little handout how to join reminds. You can get those by email if you don't want text. Um, but um, sometimes we have to cancel classes last minute, inclement weather, storm rolls in. Um, 
sometimes we've had plumbing issues with the building. I don't know, anything and everything can come up at the last minute. So text is the best way um, to stay up to date. Um, so I would highly encourage you to join the Remind app to stay up to date. And then we also send out emails. If you're not getting the CFAF emails, um, you can message me, send me an email at cfafstudios at gmail.com and I'll add you to the email list. We have two Facebook groups, one private, one public. If you wanna join the private Facebook group, um, just search for the group Christian Fine Arts of Forsyth and request to join, you'll get approved. And then um, you can look at the events on the Facebook group, either the private or the public. I try to always post events so you know what's happening. And um, we also have an Instagram which if you just go on Instagram, Christian underscore fine in underscore arts, and you can follow, follow us that way. And CFAF Dances is also on Instagram and, and, and Facebook. Facebook. So if you want to know about our dances, you can find out that way. Uh, payment options. You can pay your tuition in full at the beginning of the semester, or you can spread it out over three months. There's no extra charge to do that. Um, and then the first payment is due the first day of class and then the first of the following months. And you can pay that in cash or check. Um, check can be payable to CFAF and you can put that in the tuition box. It'll be in the front lobby. If you pay by cash, please put it, there's envelopes up there. Please put an envelope with your name. <laughs> so I know that it's from you. Um, you can also pay by Zelle to um, cfafstudios at gmail.com and you can also pay by paypal um, cfafstudios at gmail paypal has started charging us three percent so if you could just add three percent to your payment to help cover that fee that would be super helpful to us um fundraising we don't have anything specific planned right now and would be very open to any ideas in the past we've so candy bars, greeting cards, Chick-fil-A calendars. We had a kindness fundraiser, which was awesome. And the kids did kind deeds for others. And that was really, really great. So if you have ideas for a fundraiser, very open to that. Um, that can count towards your volunteering and that would be super helpful. We're having a very high increase in our rent this year, sadly. So some fundraising would really help um, with us to cover the rent increase. And I think that's it. Are you ready to see me? Okay. <laughs> Next, Corey's going to tell us about grad graduation and, and yearbook, yearbook and, and SLC, SLC and, and the dress code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm Corey Johansson. I've been teaching here for eight years. Um, I know, eight years. Huh? Louder. Me? Oh, wow, that's unusual. Okay, hi. <laughs> so yeah, I've been teaching here for eight years. I've had three out of my four kids graduate through CFAF as well. And we just love CFAF. This has been where our kids found their friend base and the fine arts education here is just phenomenal. We're very, very thankful for it. We also still have one of them came back and is teaching as well and has been for five years. Wow, this okay, for five years, okay. Um, so I'll go over the least favorite first. I guess. So <laughs> we do have a dress code here at CFAF. Um, it is online, but there's also it's also posted on some of the boards. Um, it's really not super super stringent. It is very. It's, I think it's copied more, mostly from um, the local. I guess the county county schools. Um, basically, for shorts, when it's warm outside, we like our shorts to be longer than our fingertips. So we have a fingertip rule for shorts. Skirts, however, will we'll reach to the knee. Skirts and dresses. If you have skirts and dresses, we um, because we have a dance, a lot of different dances, things where you're spinning and lifting your leg, we want shorts underneath those skirts and or dresses if you have those. Um, you can wear like a, a sleeveless to here, but it needs to be wider than three, three fingers wide. Um, other than that, really no um, no tank tops like little tank tops or string, nothing that will show undergarments anyway or belly or back. Yeah. So I don't I think it's pretty reasonable things. Also appropriate um, messages on shirts and things like that. So any questions about the dress code? 
Oh, yay, I can read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I also um, help lead each year the yearbook. We do have a yearbook for our school. Um, in the fall, I think it's October 12th, we have our um, yearbook photos where your student can come and get a photo. Um, and it's he, the man that does it is Ken Rada. Photography does a phenomenal job. He does them outside, so it's really it's not just sitting in front of a gray wall, you know. Um, but he does a great job. Um, he does those for us and we just get to put them in the yearbook. You have the option to purchase, no um, obligation to do so, but you do, he'll just send us a link and then we send it out to everyone and you can purchase directly through him if you'd like to. Um, but he does such a good job, we love him. Um, but also your student has the opportunity if they're in middle school and above or like eighth grade and above to serve on yearbook team, which can also get them credit on their transcript, which if you're homeschooling, you're doing the transcript yourself, but I would just give you a course description and send that to you if they, if they serve in that. Also, parents are also encouraged if you want, would like to, if you have a yearbook background and you want to, to use that as your volunteer time, I will take you, absolutely, please help. <laughs> so what we do usually is each person that serves on yearbook team gets four or five sections, like classes, so you might have a swing class or a clogging class, or, and then just you do fill in the photos and things on that page pretty simple and we don't that's in the spring it's not this semester so um, next um, what does the SLC we also have a leadership team it's called SLC which is student leadership coalition um, so it's if you ever see any students ladies that have or gentlemen that have the little stand up for me <laughs> you see these lovely little red lanyards those are our leadership team they're high schoolers and above or not above just high schoolers that are available to serve in whatever way you need. If you have a question or a problem or need that something answered or your child loses a dollar in the vending machine, these are your people or teacher, whichever. So they're great. They also are um, very helpful because the teachers, they help set up and down the things. They also help us with scheduling dances. Um, if your student is interested in eventually serving on leadership, just let us know. Um, also, what's the next one? Graduation, Graduation yes. Um, we do also offer graduation at the end of the year, which is super exciting. Um, we usually, on average, graduate like seven to eight students. Last year, we had our largest class ever. We graduated 20 students at one time. It was wonderful, but sad that we lost so many ones. <laughs> so if you are interested in having your student walk with graduation, and it is obviously it's your own homeschool, you're just graduating kind of all together with a group if you want your child to participate in a group setting graduation. We have sign-ups in the other room on the table with all the yearbooks as well and sign up for yearbook as well um, other ways that you can um, can also volunteer would be we if you if we ever decide we want to do to make some new costumes things like that if you are if you are handy with a sewing machine please let us know <laughs> we can put you to work for sure um, then also we are hosting um, we do host dances SLC does help host dances um, the newest one coming up, we're having our 20th anniversary dance, which is taking the place of our welcome back dance this, this year. It's September 23rd, Saturday, um, at St. David's Episcopal Church in Roswell. And so far already we have over 100 people signed up to come. So we got room for more. So please come. It is a formal, it's like homecoming. So we're doing like homecoming and then we're going to have hopefully some alumni show up. Yay. So we're going to hopefully uh, recognize some of our alumni that pop in. Yay. So, um, we'd love to have you there also. So we have Celtic dance, what else? We have Christmas dance, and then we have socials kind of mixed in. We also have a prom in, now in March. It's called our spring formal. So students that come to CFF, you have a lot of great opportunities to still participate in things that even an average high schooler and public schooler and private schooler get to do. So we just like having those opportunities available to our students as well. It's great. Um, so what else? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cover just some of um, the things that you'll need to know for especially the first couple of weeks. Parking will be an issue because people bring entire families that first day, um, especially the people that did not come to open house, so they're not hearing this. Um, will come, they'll be grandparents and aunts and uncles. And, Every parking spot will be taken. It will be so full that we will probably have to do some um, overflow parking in one of the neighbor's lots and ferry people over here. Um, so just know that it's going to be crowded. The first, after the first couple of weeks, it sort of settles down. But the first couple of weeks, it, it, will, be, it will be crowded. 
Um, so let's see, with the parking, we have to leave, um, because we shared this building, um, we have to leave four spaces uh, for the guy on this side and four spaces for the guy on this side. So don't park in those spaces, they will come and get you and um, disrupt all of our classes and everything. So make sure that they have spaces for their people to park. There is extra parking in the back and there is a back door so that you can get in that way. Um, and right now that's kind of tight too, mm -hmm. but I think they've gotten rid of some of their trucks. So we, we may be, if you look hard, you can find a place to park. Ah, it's, it's always kind of scary. Um, let's see. I did want to remind people also that there is a lovely playground right across the road where the UNG uh, coming campus is and where the aquatic center is. Um, it's a sweet <coughs> little playground and they have a covered pavilion, which is really nice if you have some other children um, that you can actually be doing some schoolwork with outside, playing on the playground, you know. Um, that's close by, and then there's a gorgeous new park down um, Pilgrim Mill. Yeah, if you just go right down Pilgrim Mill, it's on your left. Um, and it's very, very nice. They've got the, the spongy uh, ground. <laughs> I just know how they do that. It's like, but it's, it's a really nice playground. So there's some places you can go that are really close by um, if you want to do that. Let's see. What else do we have? Um... Uh, one of the basic things with like our code of conduct is I mean we, we're just asking for people to be considerate of the building it's not ours and but we have to pay for everything that happens on the inside so if your child writes something ugly on the wall actually writes anything on the wall and we have to paint it you know we're having to do the work and we're having to buy the paint so just treat everything well Yes, is that me? No, it's me. Uh, mine is going off like crazy. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, and then treat the teachers well. Treat the other students well. Be kind. You know, think of being kind to everybody. Um, and that's our basic code of conduct is just treating everything with respect and everyone with respect and kindness. Um, we talked about the dress code. Oh, I do want to introduce our teachers. A lot of them are here tonight. Um, I'll start with me. I'm Hetty Farley, and I teach the CFAF Singers. That's our high school chorus group. I teach the Symphonic Orchestra. I teach the Suzuki Strings, Elementary Strings, and very possibly Beginning Band. We're still talking about that, so I'm trying to figure that out. Um, is Zeke in this room? Zeke! <laughs> he's somewhere here. I think he's playing with nieces and nephews. Okay, we'll skip him and come back. Um, we have Jim Canone, and Jim is wonderful. He teaches our musical theater class, our middle school chorus, our intermediate band, and when we have it, he also teaches men's choir, which we don't have this semester, and we'll have to see about next semester. But uh, as Jim, we have Alex and Sammy Hamilton. They're not here tonight. Oh, Alex is back there? Oh, hiding. That's Alex. Alex is one of our graduates. Um, and is here teaching, which is pretty cool. And so is Sammy, her twin sister. So you may see Sammy and Alex um, here. Okay, we also have, they teach, let's see, class guitar, elementary ballet, K2 ballet, middle school ballet, swing kids, ukulele class, elementary chorus, and middle school Celtic. Is that correct? Okay, we have Corey Johansson that you've already met, and she teaches all of our clogging classes, middle school, high school, and elite clogging. And adult clogging, but that's kind of a different thing. Okay, we have Abby Johansson, one of our graduates. And Abby's gonna be teaching high school swing, class piano, beginning strings, and possibly some more. We're still discussing all of that. Abby also, I'll be mentioning her later there as well, but she teaches um, group and uh, private, piano, voice, violin, is that correct? Ukulele. Ukulele. Okay. All right. And we have um, Zeke. He's going to come out. This is Zeke Farley. He teaches fire choir, which is an audition group. But I 
high school Celtic for now, though that's questionable. Um, <laughs> the, uh, he runs the Taekwondo Karate School, which, and his wife teaches the Little Dragons class. So if you've got little ones and they're in Little Dragons, it is going to be Amy Farley who's teaching that. He teaches jazz band in the spring. And I will be talking about him for lessons as well later. We have Evie Kushel. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, <hello. laughs> With all her energy, uh, yeah. she teaches tiny tap, intermediate tap, and intermediate strings. And uh, let's see. That's it. That's it this year? Okay. That's it. Yeah. All right. We have um, Marcy Bowden here who teaches our art classes for um, K2 through elementary and we have uh, Daniela Cunningham's not here right she's going to be teaching elementary drama we have Anna K Walter there she is Anna K is teaching recorder class and ukulele class and is also one of our private lesson teachers um, oh I didn't mention mm -hmm. Evie is also one of our graduates um, let's see, we do have private lessons and small group lessons if you want to pursue something like that. Um, so we have uh, Zeke, go see him for piano, drum set, and any of the brass instruments. We have Phil Hodges that you heard playing up here for guitar, piano, banjo. Um, Abby Johansson, piano voice, violin, and ukulele. <laughs> Um, Alex Hamilton, piano, cello, flute, guitar, possibly some others that I may be missing. Um, Anna Kay for flute, saxophone, ukulele. Am I missing anything, Anna Kay? Is that good? Sammy Hamilton for violin, saxophone, piano, guitar, and Jim Canone teaches piano, guitar, and voice. Yes? All right. Awesome. I think I've covered anything. Are there any questions? Do you do private lessons? Uh, well, I do, but I can't take any more right now. So, yes. Um, the rest of us do teach, but many of us are at the we can't take any more right now stage. Um, so, any questions about anything? There's got to be something you've wondered about. <laughs> Did we really cover all the topics? That never happens. Okay, oh, question. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we were working on maybe do um, beginning of the week. Yes. But if you sign up for that class, do you have to have the instrument that first day and the book? book? Yes. Yeah, you need the book and the instrument. Okay. Um, really, really hard to progress without each of those. And the book is the is essential elements mm -hmm. for whatever the instrument is, book one. Um, and you can grab them on Amazon. Sometimes the local music stores have them, but I would call first. Just because I, that's the worst thing, is to drive over there and say, I need a bassoon book, and then look at you like, mm, yeah, no, we don't have that. So I would call first and make sure they have it, or like I said, Amazon will ship it right to you. So, so they can just pick the instrument they're interested in? Yes. And just show up? Yep. <laughs> yes. You mentioned that adults can participate in the meeting. Oh, yes. Adults are so welcome. And we have people ask every year. I just sort of take it for granted that you know that. If you would like to play um, cello in an orchestra, you can do that. And we have had, we've had almost every year there's an adult in either one of the choruses or band or orchestra. And um, well, I had a grandfather come up to me once and say, can I take um, my nephews in your classes? Is it all right if I sign up? And I said, sure. And he started in beginning strings and he moved into intermediate strings, and then he moved into the um, high school symphonic orchestra where he played the second violin part. And then he stayed with us until he was playing in the first section and sitting second chair. It was really, really cool. And I, I think he was having a great, great time with that. We really enjoyed our days with, with him. Um, so yes, adults are so welcome. Never too late. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> Adult clogging has gotten to be quite it's a big class, fun. so uh, that's a fun little extra thing. Okay, well, if you are ready to take a tour of the building, um, our SLC people would love to take you around and show you the rooms. And that way, at least you know where your kids are going, 
and you'll know what the building looks like so you can feel a little bit safer next week it starts next and if they want to rent an instrument tonight we can help them yeah if you want to rent an instrument tonight we can help you with that thank you very much thank you.